Yo ho, ho. 2000 Z71. This thing's been a good babysitting job lately. Now the first thing you want to do when you're trying to diagnose a lean bank code is to clear the codes. You want to look at the freeze frame data if you got a scan tool for it just to see when it happened and why. It, you might get a little hint on it, maybe not. This one didn't, uh, didn't tell me nothing with the freeze frame data. And one of the first things you want to do is clear the codes because the oxygen sensors on some vehicles, not this particular one, but a lot of Fords and other vehicles, they'll just kind of get a roundabout guess on how to make it run right, and then nothing's going to nothing's gonna work the way it's supposed to because it goes in kind of a default limp mode. So you get these you try to you get these goofy readings out of your oxygen sensors and stuff sometimes. So you want to clear the codes when you're trying to diagnose this. And one of the first, one of the other first things you want to do is you want to you want to check your mass airflow sensor and make sure it's clean. On this one, you, there's a little white tab on this connector you can take off, but it's gone. And you you pull it out of here. It's kind of gray looking. And then um, there's two screws on here. I think I'm going to just take the whole air box off. Now the reason why you want to take your mass airflow sensor off is because you want to look at these resistors. You want to make sure they're not all dirty and cruddy. Um, sometimes if there's a piece of lint or hair wrapped around the resistor or even a feather I've seen, you get, you, it, it'll, it'll throw off the resistance value of these because you, when air flows through them it cools it down and the other one just kind of stays the same and if, if those if those values those temperature values are wrong it can it can throw a lean bank code because it'll it'll think it needs a different air fuel mixture than what it really needs and it can it can really confuse things mass airflow sensors can make a lean bank code these look really clean I don't see any hair or fuzz or large chunks of debris on it sometimes when there's a can in it, people use them can in filters and they put filter oil in them and they don't filter real good and they can they can make these really filthy so if they are you can clean them you can just use regular brake cleaner they got mass airflow sensor cleaner you can use too but it's kind of the same stuff so that's that's the first thing you want to look at make sure your math is clean Next thing I did was I took this top cover off. There's just two eight millimeter bolts and this top cover comes off and you wanna, you wanna look around for any kind of vacuum leaks. I put this thing in here, fuel pressure regulator. That thing was leaking and like crazy. I did a tune up to this thing not too long ago too. I don't see anything. I don't, all these vacuum lines look really nice. Um, I pulled the PCV valve out and I just give it a shake. Make sure it rattles. I mean, you can replace it if you want. I, I know it's going to be okay. I just I just know it. Sometimes if those leak, though, it'll pull a code. You also want to make sure it doesn't have any exhaust leaks. Like, any, anything around or before the oxygen sensors can pull a lean bank code. A lot of these, a lot of these 5.3s and 6.0s, the, the, rear, the rear bolts on the exhaust manifolds break off and they can cause an exhaust leak most of the time though that's not an issue on these. I don't think it's going to be an exhaust problem anyways because it's, it's, it's pulling a, a lean bank code on both banks. So it's telling me it's something else. If it was on one bank you really want to look for exhaust leaks or maybe an oxygen sensor. Um, make sure that those are working properly. But they are. Now if you're really stuck you're gonna have to get a scan tool that's got live data on it. I just turned on the fuel trim and nothing more because this is all I really got to look at. Now these fuel trim values are at 25 and 27 and anything over 14 is no good. You generally want it under 10 or 12. If it's around 12 it's, it's gonna be pulling the code sooner or later. Zero is perfect. And then what short what what fuel trim means is if, if it's a positive number it means it's adding fuel so it's it thinks it has a lean condition and if it's negative 
it's subtracting fuel so it thinks it's going to have a rich condition um, like like that that fuel pressure regulator that was leaking like a sieve it'll go right through the vacuum line it'll add more fuel than what it's supposed to so the fuel trim will actually run negative I'm gonna get a, a flammable mix you got to make sure it says that it's flammable extremely flammable you got to I'm using flammable brake cleaner if it's not flammable this isn't going to work and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it around in various places to try to find this air leak and I already found it when you're using this too you want to make sure that it doesn't get anywhere near the air duct because if you get it near the air duct where it takes in intake air it can go into your intake and it'll it'll make it'll it'll make it think it needs to lean out so you want to you want to keep it away from anything where like you know if you if you got one of them them stupid little cone filters or whatever you want to you want to keep it away from that because it, it'll it'll throw off this this test you know you can you can squirt things like like this and and like if it's got an EGR valve a lot of times these do leak if you, if you squirt it down here there's a there's a little there's a valve in there it kind of sucks a little air sometimes and it'll 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 make it run negative but yeah I squirted it down here and if you look you give it a minute and see that fuel trims dropping out and it's all on bank one short-term fuel trim one it's running super negative right now so there's there's a there's a leak on on the bank one side which would be the driver's side of this vehicle and if it was a leak on the passenger side it'd do the same thing on the on on bank two and and when this when this flammable mix dries up this this fuel trim value is going to go back up that, that's how you find intake and vacuum and manifold leaks. Give it a minute, it'll come back up on me. I just sprayed the passenger side. And it went negative on the passenger side. So both sides of this intake manifold is leaking after all. It's really running not, it doesn't idle good at all. But yeah, I can squirt both sides now. I squirted both the passenger and driver side and they're both falling out now. So yeah, this thing's got a really old crusty intake gasket. I'm going to replace it. Now before I go and put that beauty cover on, I'm going to run this thing and make sure I fixed it. You always want to double check because a lot of times you think you got it and you do a bunch of work to try to make a fuel trim code go away and sometimes the dang thing just doesn't go away. So we'll see. Lovely. My short term fuel trim's at negative 11 and the long term's at 25. Um, the long term's basically block learn or cat monitoring, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. But when, 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 when this thing reprograms the fuel trim, when it relearns the fuel trim, the short term is gonna go down to zero and it's gonna bring them long term numbers down and it's going to bring these negative numbers up closer to zero. So if I let this run long enough, I'm sure it's going to be well within my 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 14 percent or less range. So this is this is great. I could actually hose it down too with with uh, with brake cleaner again and, and see if see if the short term fuel trim drops even more than the negative numbers it has. But it's probably not going to do that so it's good enough even if it does have a little leak here and there i'm going to call this a fix okay bye